Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, you're going to learn two new theorems that are going to help you prove that two triangles are congruent. One is the side 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 and one is the side angle side. We call them SSS and SAS. Now let's uh, look at, at a couple of uh, congruent figures here and do a quick review. So what we know about congruent figures is that they have all of the same corresponding sides, the same corresponding angles, and they're all congruent, meaning they're the same measure of side and the same measure of angle. Okay? And so this is how we state that uh, two triangles are congruent. We uh, choose three points on the first triangle, and then we choose the corresponding points on the other one. And so A matches D, B matches E, and C matches F. Very important to know. Now, what if we didn't have all the parts of uh, two triangles? Suppose you were given these two triangles, and you just had three corresponding sides that were congruent, but you didn't know anything about the angles. Do you think that this would be enough to prove that they were congruent? Well, let's take a look at the, um, the triangle a little bit closer, because they are congruent. Let me show you why. If you took that triangle, and you took the sides and you separated them, and I asked you to shape, put those three sides into a triangle any way that you want, different way whatsoever, what you would find out is the only triangle that you can come up with is that same triangle. Now it might be upside down or sideways or reflected, reversed, but it's still going to have the exact same sides and the exact same angles. And so this is enough to prove that we have congruency. So looking back at our two triangles, given that we have three corresponding and congruent sides, this tells us that we have congruency. And we call this the side-side-side theorem, also known as SSS. And so you can use this now to prove that two triangles are congruent. Now let's take a look at these two triangles. They look to appear to be the same. They have two uh, congruent sides, and the angle in between them is congruent as well. Do you think this would be enough to prove congruency? Well, I'm here to say that you will be. And let me show you why. If you take that triangle and you remove this side, let's take a look at those two sides and the angle. See, those two sides are the same, right? And the angle in between them, that cannot change. And so you cannot move those two sides anywhere but their position right there. You may be able to rotate the entire shape around, but those two sides are locked into that angle. And the only side that will fit there is that original side. And so this is enough information to prove that two triangles are congruent. We call it the side angle side theorem, SAS. Now what does this all mean? So you've just discovered the theorems of SSS and SAS. And although two congruent triangles have the same congruent corresponding parts, like angles and sides, all you really need to prove that they're congruent is that all three sides are congruent. We don't need the angles in this case. That's the side, side, side. And then also, if you were just given two sides that were congruent and the angle in between them, that is enough information to prove that these are congruent, called the side-angle-side theorem. 
Now let's try some problems. You're presented with these three triangles that all appear to be uh, pretty close to being the same, and you're asked to find the two congruent triangles, okay, using the side-side-side theorem. Now, you probably won't take very long to figure out which ones are congruent. We know that these two are congruent. Why do I know the middle one is not? Because of this side right there. It has four tick marks, meaning that is not uh, congruent to the three tick marks that it's uh, supposed to be. So, now that we have identified the two triangles, we need to write the triangle names properly. And so it doesn't matter which letters you put in order on the first triangle. It doesn't have to go in alphabetical order. Uh, you can choose whichever way you want to go. So I'm going to choose B, C, and A. Okay, B, C, and A. I go from the B, I go across the two tick mark to the C, and the C across the three tick marks to the A. And so B, C, A is my triangle. Now, the order of the letters that I put in the next triangle have to be the exact corresponding order. So, my B, which is the first one, matches M. And from M, I go across two tick marks to G, and then across the three tick marks to the F. So, my triangle is called MGF. It has to be in those order, that order. If it isn't, it is completely wrong. You're saying that two um, sides and two points are corresponding when they're not. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this one. Can you identify the two triangles that are congruent? We're going to use the side-side-side theorem again. And I can see that this one and this one are congruent. Why is the uh, one on the left not? Because it has two double tick marks, and it needs to have one, one tick mark. And so we know that is not congruent to the others, and the others have the same sides. So we are going to uh, write our triangle name. And so it doesn't matter, again, which letters you start with. Um, I'll pick S here. I'll go across the three tick marks to L and then across two to R. So SLR is my triangle. And so then on the second one, I have to go in the same corresponding order. And so my S matches to Z. And I'm going to go across the three tick mark and then across the two tick mark, and so I get Z, B, X. Okay, there it is. Now, suppose you're given these three triangles, and you're asked to find the congruency using the side-angle side theorem. Now, looking at these three triangles, I can tell right off the bat that these two are congruent. The reason why the third one is not is because of this different side by indicated by the uh, tick marks. So I'm going to write my triangles. I will uh, start with D, go across to the angle to K, and then back to M. And so I often do this if I'm doing side angle side, I will uh, make my letters go around the uh, angle there. So D, K, M. And so on my second one, I am going to start with L and then move it to the angle R and then out to S. And so LRS is the congruent order. Now, look at these three. We're doing the same thing. We're trying to prove side angle side. Now, are all three of these congruent? They have two sides that are the same, and they have three angles that are the same. But there's something wrong in one of them, and can you recognize what it is? Remember that side angle side has to be the two sides with the angle between them, okay, separating them. And if you look over here, this double tick mark should be on the other side if it were going to be congruent. So that is not 
one of our pairs. So let's uh, write our triangle DBF and the congruent order, corresponding order is QMO to the other one. So QMO. All right. Now, we're finished, but the most important thing that I want you to know is that when you are writing that final congruency statement, I need you to make sure that you put your triangle points in the same corresponding order. I can't reiterate that enough. If you don't, it is completely wrong. You may be able to identify that two of the triangles are congruent, but if you don't put them in order, it's not correct. All right. There you have it. You just learned two new theorems, the side 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 and the and the side angle side, also known as SSS and SAS, to prove that two triangles are congruent. I always encourage you to go back and watch the video if you need to, if you didn't quite grasp it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.